have been using SLT for a number of years, well over 15 years in our practice. And uh, it's a very common procedure in our practice. And the reason is simply that our alternatives have disadvantages. Whether we try medications or certainly surgery has its complexities. And the uh, acceptance of this technology, this approach by patients is great and the results are there. Uh, with the newer technology, specifically with SLT, uh, we've had also good luck in repeating the treatment down the road. So it allows us to minimally impact the quality of life of our patients while at the same time maintaining their vision uh, for the rest of their life. There have been a number of studies that have really examined the critical question, how does SLT compare to medications? And within the medication group, the prostaglandin analogs uh, really are the most utilized class currently. Uh, the SLT uh, versus MED study that was recently published confirmed what we've known in our practice for some time, that SLT works. And what's interesting is if you take a look at the study, there were additional steps required on average within the medication group. So not only was it a better solution for the patients as far as compliance, as far as convenience and comfort, but in fact there were fewer steps required when the patient was in the office. So clearly SLT is a great first option for the right patients. Glaucoma patients come to us in different stages of the disease. Sometimes this is the first visit and this is the initial treatment. Sometimes they've had filtering surgery or on multiple medications and really it depends on the history and how they've done. If they have not had SLT before, even if they've already had filtering surgery, it's something to consider. If the angle structures look appropriate, uh, it may work in that setting as well. So across the board, now, even if a patient is being controlled on two or three medicines, uh, if we are able to do an SLT and remove one or two drops, that's an important improvement in the patient's quality of life. Uh, in the United States, unfortunately, costs are not insignificant and patients are being asked to, uh, bur bur are burdened with uh, larger and larger copays for these different medications. So from a practical point of view, we, we may have a great drug and even if the patient wants to take it on a regular basis, they can't always afford it. Um, one of my patients came up with a great idea that they would treat their heart one month and their eye the next month and uh, it's an interesting idea but I don't think it's the right one. When we look at patients and what is the best treatment option for them, there are a variety of different publications that we can look to to give us guidance. But ultimately for any individual patient or individual eye as a clinician, as an ophthalmologist, we have to look at all that data and make the right decision. Within this, that spectrum of treatment options, we have medications, we have laser treatments such as SLT and, and filtering surgery. And as we look at those options, we really want to find what's the best option, the safest option, the option that will uh, protect the patient in the long term, yet minimally impact their quality of life now. So when possible, SLT is certainly considered in the top uh, of this group. Not every patient is a candidate for SLT, not every patient will have the response that we'd like, but most do, and having the ability to repeat it is really important. So it is certainly in our top option list, and most patients, when they learn and compare the different alternatives, uh, often gravitate towards SLT.